So Ozan, my first question is as follows. Uh, kind of a very fundamental and basic question, but um, not everyone is as experienced as you are in the markets and so on. So for the benefit of uh, our listeners, our learners, what is macro trading? Why is it so called? And what is the benefit uh you know what 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 can people get out of it what's included in the world of macro trading you know everyone knows equity trading and forex trading uh you know people know equities interest rates a little bit but mostly people know about equities and foreign exchange right and oil and gold if you think in general in the retail world uh people at home moms and pops blah 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 so what is macro trading and why is it so called in my mind macro rohit a little bit brings it everything uh, together so okay. as you said, equities, rates, FX, uh, credits, uh, emerging markets, developed markets. Um, it, it's a way of predicting political economy, different countries uh, reacting differently in their economic cycles or in their uh, political choices, and how those choices affect their markets, affect the citizens in the world, day in, day out. And obviously, we have some very important current examples. In the island I live in, first Brexit, what it will mean, what it will mean for immediately for the value of the currency, for the interest rates, for the equity markets, um, populism, uh, you know, the uh, Trump's, uh, Putin's, uh, Modi's of the world. And there is one way headlines react, but there's a whole different way um, markets, FX rates and equity react. And before even all that, uh, you know, uh, Euro, the foundation of Euro, and big central bank hikes, big central bank cuttings, bringing all that uh, together, in my mind, is macro. These days, sadly, some people can't even say six or seven tech stocks determine it. They may be right, but that in itself is an observation. And does that mean we're living in the 1999? Or are we still in 1998? What do I mean by that? Greenspan first had irrational exuberance way back in 1997. We continue to rally for another uh, three years. Is the current correction in NASDAQ just a correction, a big opportunity to buy? Or is it the start of things uh, very, very sinister? So um, that in a nutshell is the way is the way I approach it. I have a, a let's say, a love-dislike relationship with The Economist magazine for almost three decades now. Uh, I told my father, actually, um, way before I started, in, even during the college years, I said, I want this to be more or less my profession. But to be able to guess what's on top of, on the cover of Economist, uh, sometimes two weeks, sometimes uh, three months, six months in advance. As you know, somebody very close to me, uh, sometimes predicting financial times headline, one week, 10 days in advance, part of the this month <laughs> adventure. Uh, that, in a nutshell, uh, is macro, is my uh, day-to-day job, life. So uh, that's a, a very illustrative explanation, Ozan. So if I, if I were to summarize, would you say macro is, includes all liquid tradable asset classes, including FX, foreign exchange, equities, interest rates, uh, commodities, uh, be they precious or non-precious, industrial, uh, I see. bonds, for, for, credit default swaps. We got uh, a bit more uh, wild like the last three, four years. I used to tell my uh, you know, interns, associates, analysts, um, look, put your, because that's what I did, put your head on the pillow. You know, if you're into finance, first of all, we'll get into that as well, you know, trading. Uh, if you're more interested in you know, EBITDA of a con- you know, company, even before the EBITDA, you know, how uh, different sectors and sectors races work, um, how a company's balance sheet may work out, uh, what a company should do with its uh, assets and liabilities, etc. Maybe then more corporate finance, M&A is more your type of world. If you're very into a country's GDP, inflation, What's the best uh, method to control inflation, uh, redistribution versus growth, uh, how a central bank at any uh, cycle of a country should react. If this really gets you going, 
you know, besides just uh, reading it on the papers, then start coming our way, either whether it's research, trading, sales, uh, then you're more and more hooked to uh, hooked to macro. Uh, and in a way, uh, 12 years ago, 15 years ago, everybody was still more, even these macro, what we call macro legends these days, they were more into their equity or relative value trading or FX or rates works. Then Lehman happened. Uh, we had the big global financial crisis. Uh, central banks started doing things that we have never seen led by Bernanke. Uh, but emerging markets were staying very safe because it hadn't hit their shores yet. Uh, we first start to fee- start to f- try to find out who the next demon was in different banks. Then, uh, because of Greece, a uh, European crisis started to emerge its head. We realized that uh, just because we had a monetary union, we didn't necessarily have a fiscal union, and that, that's not a good foundation for the whole Europe. So literally, some uh, big fund market go, went against the foundation of European uh, European Union, different countries, etc. Then everybody at the same time, from emerging markets to developed markets, started getting interested in um, interest rates, FX, credit, and how they interacted at the same time. Uh, they started uh, in the European crisis. For the first time, we started to analyze Italy when uh, Italian rates went all the way to up to 6%, 7%. Is that now a rate product? Again, you and I were shoulder to shoulder on the same floor. Then. Is that now a rate product, credit product? What is it? Can an Italy really trade like, uh, you know, I don't even want to say Argentina, but emerging markets, some of our close Italian friends went, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you know, Greece cannot be, Italy cannot be the next Greece. You know what I'm saying. So sure. then, uh, a whole new regime started, uh, and now increasingly so. Even those of us who think that we are one product specialist are trying to look at the more market more and more, world more and more through all different asset classes coming together. Okay, okay, cool. That's a nice historical perspective of macro markets and how things kind of come together and are extremely interdependent. So if you're watching one market, if you're a forex trader, for example, you still got to know what's happening with oil. You still got to know what's happening in interest rates. You still got to know what's happening in equities, bonds, probably CDS, etc., crossover levels and so on, right? And similarly, vice versa for any other asset class. Perfect. Now, Ozan, in our prior discussion, we you talked about uh, something which I personally found really interesting and I think all the viewers, including some of your friends who uh, watch the our our conversation or or a, a part a little a little Maybe. piece of our conversation, uh, they found really interesting. And I think you referred to it uh, using a tennis an- a- analogy, calling like you know you called it the forehand and backhand. Uh, so using your forehand and backhand analogy, you talked about the art and science of trading. So you know we, we talked about how you use the art and science forehand backhand now can you go a little bit deeper and if possible share a personal example or story of how you relied on art and science when you were first starting out even even to this day look the i'm a i'm a a federal guy so let's start with the with the forehand forehand to me is uh, the fundamentals uh, how I look at uh, the macroeconomy and politics of a country. After all, I started with a research background, and I first want to look at uh, how I predict uh, a certain country's actions will lead its uh, rates and currency to do. But on it alone, you cannot rely. In my, in my earlier years, I used to say, you, one shouldn't trade in and out sooner or later, You know, as long as, I don't know, Emerging market says, as long as IMF package is in place, these rates will continue to rally, don't touch it, etc., etc. If you if you play it like that, uh, maybe two three months you're right, but on the on the fourth month you can really get burned uh, on a on a currency crisis or a currency crisis turning into a credit crisis. That taught me that backend has to come into play as well. Uh, technical analysis, positioning, uh, charts, 
you may not be a big believer in uh, 50-day moving average, 200-day moving average, but even way before uh, these days, even 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I realized that I had to have a feel for that as well because many people looked at it. So that would uh, help me um, set up uh, the way I approach uh, which way will go first. You know me, I always go with, I speak very, very currently, uh, we've been uh, touching all-time highs in, uh, in S&P. We had a big correction all of a sudden in, in September. Uh, as we speak, we're trading around 3,200, 3,300. As I told you, is this an uh, all-time buying opportunity? Will we go back to 3,600, 3,700 first, break the high? Or is it going to get even more sinister? 3,000, 2,900. That's always my uh, starting question. Uh, big dollar comeback, as I speak again, when everybody was short dollars in August, July. We were around one, uh, 1.16. We, will we go back to short dollar mentality, 120? Will people be saved by the bell? Or will, it, will the pain increase even more, 112, 111? First of all, I, I always have my answers. I do these round tables in the COVID days, Zooms, whatever it is, talk to my friends, have that uh, proportion in my mind. But also go back to charts. What does 50-day moving average show you? What the 20-day moving average show you? Everybody says the X, Y, 94 is a big is a big deal. Is it really a big deal? What do what do I personally think about it? And uh, bringing all that together um, shapes the way um, I approach the market. That's why I think always uh, forehand and backhand is uh, very very important. Thanks to you. I mean credit to you. Another thing that you chose in our, what do you want to call, call it, preview, appetizer, etc. And from what I said was uh, humbleness, to be humble. What do I mean by that? People really, some, uh, they say some quite legends love that. Learning from your mistakes, finding, you know, admitting uh, when, when, we're, when, when you're simply wrong. None of us, uh, including all the legends in the world, are right uh, 10 out of 10. Uh, when you're wrong, uh, 2 out of 10. Find out what went wrong. Try to learn from it. Be upfront with it. Whether you're a trader, if you're a trader, take your stop loss. Uh, if you're sales, I try to explain to your clients what went wrong. Research, etc. Again, where, where you went wrong with the analysis. Don't don't hide under the table. That again to all the all the young uh, ladies and guys listening. Uh, people know the difference very quickly between those. Uh, who run away from you uh, once a, uh, a call goes wrong and those who own it. And the, the latter camp is the one that people continue to listen to and go back to. Uh, thanks, Ozan. Uh, just to, again, clarify and delve a bit deeper into that, what I want to try and understand is for you over the last, say, 20, 25 years, you've been very active in the financial markets, uh, working in large international banks and so on. How has your perception and reliance of the art and science, forehand, backhand, actually evolved or changed? What is, what's different in how you perceive? Let me give an example. Uh, you know, when I started my career, uh, August, Friday the 13th, August uh, 1993, as a, as a foreign exchange trader, uh, it, it, I was just I just happened to be in a group of people where technical analysis and charting was was a big deal right so my question is that's what that's what we are calling backhand in a sense so my question is has backhand become has back the importance of backhand remained the same in your mind it has grown a lot has kind of fallen a bit uh, and you can tie this into how the markets have evolved but I just want your sense of how you personally relied on it and then versus now, is it exactly the same? There must be some changes, some things different. I and mean, I want you to just kind of throw yourself back 20, 25 years. Yeah. And I, I, want, I, want to, I want to put, put, I want you to put yourself in the shoes of, you know, what would you tell a novice trader or someone just who's starting out in their trading career, what they should first think about in this regard. And, you know, of course, as they get more experienced, it's what everything you said right now. I think the most important thing about, uh, you know, the importance of the backhand, right? I mean, it, uh, in a sense, uh, 
it's helping me now understand the positioning and the pain better. Uh, when I keep saying about this, you know, pain trade, frustration trade, etc., etc., uh, my belief in you know, in the fundamentals and the way I approach the fundamentals remains the same, constant. If anything, it's increasing. I have that. I have that confidence. But um, whether you use the the charts, whether you use the positioning surveys, whatever you want to call it, um, these days because the algorithms are becoming so important, mm. because the robots are becoming so important, yeah. because uh, so much is uh, in Asia time, whenever it's happening, already 80% of the models while we sleep. Um, you have to have a sense of what what those charts indicate as big, uh, you know, barrier points, big bouncing points, big turning points, or the same thing as surveys. I mean, you need to, you need to know what surveys to trust so that you for yourself can judge um, uh, whether... You're right about um, uh, about positioning, about the pain trades, so that uh, you can really judge for yourself where the momentum is. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Uh, sure. At uh, 120, uh, two weeks ago or something, euros, a few times we bounced from that. Um, I knew market was quite short dollars, uh, but at the same time, it, it it almost felt like market was trying to find an excuse to to break it. Uh, oh, you know, Powell will be more dovish than than Lagarde. Oh, you know, there's the, the cases are increasing, but Europeans are in control. Yeah, European European stocks are really not trading well since July August. You know, started to underperform uh, Nasdaq again, but that can come back. Almost trying trying to create excuses. At the same, time, I look at the I look at the chart. At the same time, I look at reports. It just doesn't smell right. And yeah. then after, uh, you know, after uh, playing around with words, calling dollar all of a sudden Mickey Mouse, I turned, I started saying 116, 115 is the pain trade, et cetera, et cetera. And I wrote it. That's in a nutshell is a current example to you, basically. Okay, cool. Thanks. Let's talk a bit about making the right calls on the market. You know, you'd mentioned earlier that sometimes you use... Uh, perhaps a bit more than sometimes, use reverse indicators from CNBC, watching out for the odd investor who, you know, often chases a high, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And now, Ozan, you work daily with some of the world's most famous and renowned traders who all in turn respect your views as well. So my questions are, the first question, I have three questions. So let me ask the first, you the first question first. How do the best traders make the right calls on the market? I mean, it depends on their uh, personal style, but first of all, I think they need to, uh, they need to be dedicated. Even when they made the, whatever, billions and the big uh, companies, et cetera, et cetera, especially in this day and age, uh, almost like a professional sports player, you have to be dedicated 24 seven. Um, Monday to Friday, every morning you should wake up uh, to play. I mean, everybody have their own styles, you know, uh, beyond any pretense, uh, family is very important. So you, I, I'm not, I'm not necessarily meaning you should be glued to your iPhone, Blue, 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 Bloomberg screen 24 seven. Everybody has their own ways. Um, but it's, especially in this day and age, uh, even for those who claim they're for sovereign wealth fund, they have five year horizons, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you're not glued to the, to the weeds day in, day out, mm. Um, this doesn't work. Uh, some of the best traders I know are more fundamentalists. Some of them are more momentum players, like we discussed in the previous uh, yeah. question team. Probably the best ones are uh, those who can bring a combination to the game. Sure. Then I want to revisit how you open the uh, open it all up. Um, you said most of almost most of more more of the time you're using them as reverse parameters. Uh, I'm not doing that just to be a tongue-in-cheek nasty guy, but because for the past 10, 12 years, what's the key thing that the market has been quote-unquote quite wrong about? What's this huge god of thing that I'm talking about? Waiting for inflation, waiting for normalization. Because back in 1995, 2005, when we were first getting going in this in this in this career, things were quote-unquote a bit more easier when. Inflation went out of went out of hand. 
Uh, you didn't have to be some uh, emerging market country. From Walker days on, uh, you hiked rates. If you had a bit more connection with the central banks, you could uh, you could uh, understand when that uh, when that move, move could come uh, faster. Uh, you put on your uh, volatility trades, steepeners, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And likewise, fine. Well, unfortunately, um, since 2008, uh, we're jumping from one crisis to another. We talked about the global financial crisis, then European crisis, all kinds of QEs thrown into the game. First Japan, then Europe, then America. Um, 2016, attacked by populism, and now COVID. Um, somehow this normalization is not happening. Uh, asset price inflation, for sure. We may even call it a bubble. Uh, but for the men on the street, inflation is simply not there. Central banks are suppressing volatility. Um, so those that I call wrestlers keep calling for normalization and steeper curves. Mm. Uh, but it's not coming. There are only a handful on the buy side and sell side who really smell this. Uh, that doesn't mean they were going for uh, flatter rates and you know received all the time. Then, then they would have been killed as well. But that was their... Uh, you know, this is Godo, we may be going, you know, quote-unquote Japanization way was more their motto. And those type of guys I give um, a different uh, a different ear to, not to be named. One uh, big uh, real money investor, CIO, all over the televisions as well, nothing on public. Uh, way before COVID, last year, around uh, July, August, again, you read every Bloomberg I sent uh, because it was public, I named the guy. He said, you know, these rates are, uh, you know, he want the headline, I guess, as well, I guess. They, he said they're going to zero when we when TY was around 2%, when everybody was, again, one way or another calling for threes and 320s. Um, I made note of it. Obviously, you know, long voice as well, good partner to your voice. And it turned out to be, you know, unfortunately for the world, COVID a little bit helped the call as well. And, and I rely on th- those type of... Um, uh, people more. All the good traders I know, again, repeat, learn from their mistakes. Mm. Uh, to, you know, try to, it, it may have been 10 years, 15 years, but maybe because of supply, this time around the inflation will come. Uh, I'm, I'm open to it as well. I still think first deflation, then inflation fears will come, especially in a Biden versus Trump world. But I do have an open mind. Um, you you want to make sure that you never say uh, never, um, but at the same time you keep your uh, key conviction. So, got all that. How important for the the kind of dedicated trader? So it's very important to be dedicated. It, however big you are, that's you know pretty important to kind of get the calls right. Even if you're a five year investor. Uh, you have a five-year investing kind of mentality. You still have to put on a trading hat and, and you know, as you said, uh, you know, uh, keep your head down and watch what happens on a daily basis in the markets, right? Uh, how important is sentiment positioning to making the right calls for, you know, to be a very good trader? How, how important is that uh, versus... Uh, uh, versus, uh, for example, you know, statements, announcements, uh, other things, uh, you know, large capital flows, etc. Fundamentals, data, etc. Versus expectations. So, how important would the absolute uh, positioning size of a market be? And this is again all public, right? I mean, you you have this information uh, coming through, and you know, in terms of outstanding futures contracts in the S and P. Uh, and or or whatever asset class, right? Foreign exchange, gold. Uh, you know you, uh, you know you get to what extent you you get data to what extent. Uh, you know, large speculators are long, small speculators are long or short. Uh, corporate hedging. This is all published information, which is freely available on a at least a weekly, if not a daily basis, on the internet. How how important is this, uh, Ozan? Uh, very for, to be a very good trader. Getting, getting getting more and more important is the answer. Um, you know, on one hand, uh, beauty of the markets at the moment, and we'll get into Robin Hood and all that. I'm very, very open to uh, the world becoming uh, this transparent, 
Uh, we can say many negative things about social media as well, but at this time there is there, there's hard, there's very little uh, um, hidden in this in this uh, mm. uh, global market at the moment. The, the news hit the wires twenty four seven. Everybody's uh, more or less has the same information in an incredibly fast way. Uh, so markets uh, sometimes move. Uh, uh, very very fast. So to, to differentiate yourself, uh, mm. first of all, of course, you need to have a, a core view on our different FX rates, credit, equity, emerging market asset classes. But equally important, more and more so, for almost six seven years now, uh, you have to have your own judgment of uh, where the positioning lies, what really is the herd mentality trade. Again, bringing science and art together into game to see how much, uh, which one of those herd mentality traits will go on and on, and which may be uh, stuck soon. Um, again, let's always make try to make it more concrete, right? Gold um, at the beginning of this year, or even uh, um, towards the middle of last year, it started to become more and more popular. But, but I thought it would continue to work, mm. either as an inflation hedge for for my wrestlers, or for the type of role. Again, I didn't thank you know thank God I didn't predict COVID etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, this type of role that I would I would live in next time I would do a call with you I would be in my house etc. But uh, I could sense that if for different reasons the world went risk off. Uh, way back in February, fearing uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren, fearing Bernie Sanders, etc., etc. Uh, instead of choosing this or that currency, because all currencies looked uh, crap, they could jump more and more on, more on gold. So that made me believe whatever positioning said way back in November, December last year, uh, gold uh, could have uh, could have legs. Um, Euro. At the beginning of this year, uh, March, April, once, uh, or actually May, May 8, once Merkel and Macron together faced the cameras and first mentioned the recovery fund, that was new. I mean, you could say Hamiltonian moment is a you know glamorous way of putting it, uh, sensations way of putting it, etc., etc. But you could see the uh, determination there, and I knew from my seat, from my conversations. From my, uh, you know, banks positioning reports, I knew that uh, long euro was not that crowded. Uh, so together with my strategies, I could form a form a view saying that from 111, 112, this could have legs. It worked. Then uh, we discussed it 10 minutes ago why at 120 it thought it felt to me like now it was a forced trade exaggeration that it wouldn't break 120. So. Uh, Quick answer to your question after all that. Yes, in this day and age, uh, it's one of my key rackets, positioning yeah. my own sense of whatever different reports say, uh, my own sense of where the color trades are in FX rates, um, equities and credit, and how they interact with each other. Very important. Okay. Uh, makes complete sense, Ozan. Uh, just a short corollary to that again. If, if let's say you have somebody who is a uh, you know smart guy or a woman or anyone who's essentially uh, uh, wants to try and trade the markets, make some money. Uh, you know your uh, your typical your typical market participant on Robinhood, since you use the word Robinhood. If they want to get a feel for uh, market positioning, what's the easiest way for them to do it? In case, in case you know that at the top of your head, publicly, what is that? What is the public information available? I mean, do do all these platforms now? You know, whether it's your interactive brokers or your Robin Hoods of the world, etc. Do they all provide this information very easily? In your opinion, is it is it accessible to all? I mean, in, in from from my feed, my personal experience, uh, I get it from different. Obviously, obviously, my bank and my reports, but also uh, what different banks provide. Uh, they put it out publicly anyway. 
uh, even those without giving some names, certain ones, um, it feels to me is the positioning sense of two weeks or one month ago, whereas some of them are much more, you know what I mean, some of them are much more um, up to date. So there is no easy answer to that. For that one, they need to, you know, uh, rely on their own uh, public resources and, and judge um, which one is a, which one is a bit better indicator and which one is not. Sure. Otherwise, if it was just one easy button to button to push, everybody could could for themselves decide. Uh, you know, Euro positioning is ninety percent at the moment. You know, you know what I'm saying. So it's correct. It's not that easy. It's not that easy to judge. No, I fully agree. In fact, I'm just trying to um, trying to pull up um, pull up something. Give me ten seconds. So. The kind of things that I was referring to, uh, which I have found are quite easily accessible to, let's say, uh, the man on the street, a uh, person sitting in a waiting room on his or her phone, checking out the markets. You know, the things that somebody, any of these people that I've described or the personas that I've described could look at, you know, you know, things that come, come to my mind, for example, are... Uh, Things like put call ratio, uh, you know, various kind of sentiment indicators. Uh, some obvious ones, VIX levels, uh, or say divergence of VIX levels to the underlying uh, market. Uh, short interest, which we talked about earlier, long interest in the you know in in the uh, S and P futures or in an ETF SPY. Uh, uh, you know, then technicals also, which is a kind of uh, you know you can say that technicals or technical analysis is, throws up sentiment indicators. Uh, you know, things like uh, uh, relative strength indicator, RSI, uh, moving average, convergent, divergence, all the kind of stuff that, you know, probably your technical analysts, you know, talk to you about uh, or that, that that's like liberally available again online. Uh, you know, you can look at the geometric or linear median S&P stock versus the S&P as a whole. Again, a kind of a sense of how how bro broad the market is, kind of divergence you have in the market. You know, there are people who who live and die by Fibonacci retracement uh, and extension levels. You have all kinds of uh, you have all kinds of people. I even know I, I even know you know you know of people who look at uh, you know the the way the stars and the you know are, are ast astrological indicators and so on. You know, people do all kinds of things, Ozan. And you know, then you have di di you have different kinds of measured sentiment indicators. So for example, you know, you have websites uh, like Sentiment Trader, uh, StockCharts.com, Yardeni.com, all of which again are all public. Okay. Put call ratio, very important one. The sentiment CFC sentiment indicator. Just uh, three days ago, it did say rightly that uh, Nasdaq short interest all of a sudden was at top. So, but now what, what do you do with it? It's correct. All of a sudden, we from all being long the same six, seven stocks, people get incredibly bared up. Poor Robin Hood, etc. All especially feel the uh, the push, the purge, the the margin calls, etc., etc. But if you tell me, um, as we speak, by the way, uh, Munichin and Pelosi gave yet another stimulus carrot. Oh yeah, yeah, we're talking, we're talking. That's why we're at the session highs, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yet, do not. <laughs> so. My gut feel is, despite all that talk, uh, in the middle of this sad RBG passing and Supreme Court talk, etc., etc., at best they will pass something skinny. Uh, my prediction is uh, Pelosi won't allow them to pass anything. So, uh, even though uh, your put call ratio and your CFC sentiment index may tell you to go for it, I'd wait a bit. I'd uh, continue to. Uh, make the bulls of August sweat. Mm. Uh, but give it another uh, two, three days. If I feel over the weekend I'm, I'm wrong, at, the, at least at the very beginning, these guys will pass something, uh, I may change my mind. Okay. Or at the moment, deep inside, going back to your uh, charts, and bringing for back end and front together and giving a very co concrete example. At the moment, there are four forces fighting with each other. On the bearish side, let me introduce on bearish uh, risk equities, um, but bullish um, dollar King Kong side, we have one, the increase, increasingly uncertain US election 
scenarios. By the way, that's also getting a bit too cute for my taste. This, this will take one month, two months. We won't know the winner, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. But we can get there. Everybody all of a sudden getting so interested in buying uh, options around the, around the election date, etc., etc. But even Trump himself, yes, they said this may go to Supreme Court. Because of that, the probability of a fiscal stimulus falling and falling and falling at best a skinny. We talked about this. And then our uh, sinister friend, COVID, uh, rising infections all of a sudden in, uh, in, in Europe, what my island is doing. I mean, we could uh, hear the chatters of uh, shutdown five, five days ago, but nobody really expected from Boris the six month word. All of a sudden, all banks scaling back again, maybe until uh, March 2021, they won't be able to call in uh, somebody in unless he or she volunteers. So these are all bearish uh, forces. And on the bullish side, still vaccine. Now, uh, you and I are not uh, medical experts, but we can go forever on this one uh, as well. When will it come? Will we trust the distribution, et cetera, et cetera. But my prediction is uh, Trump really needs this. So before November 3, if, if a credible name, Pfizer, Moderna, Astra, whatever it is, he will come out and say, yes, this is the vaccine, this is the distribution channel, et cetera, et cetera. So we will have um, uh, our hope. That's the moment in which equities will go higher, uh, dollar will, uh, will be sold again, and rates will go higher. And then the art comes in. Which one? How much? Uh, which asset class it helps the most? Et cetera, et cetera. I have my answers for that as well, but that's... That's sure. how I approach it. Sure. So, so in a nutshell, Ozan, uh, I, I hear you. What you're saying is, yes, uh, sentiment might be super bearish as shown by put call ratio, as shown by smart money, dumb money, confidence sentiment indicator, as shown by the percentage showing pessimism, optimism, optimism, as shown by uh, AA2 bears versus divided by AA2 bulls or, or the inverse of that on stockcharts.com, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not enough because you could be bearish, but you could get more bearish. Uh, and you still need to keep your eyes and ears open along with these kind of sentiment technical indicators for, for the, for what's happening on in the real, real market. And you've given a couple of examples in that direction. You put it perfectly. It's a very important ingredient for me, but, uh, it cannot solve it alone. Okay. Got you. Uh, again, I want you to, uh, step back in time a little bit now. Uh, go back 20 years if you like in your life or visualize people that you see in your interaction who are starting out as traders what are the quote unquote additional or just what are the resources one needs when first starting out as a trader think very basic very simple what are these resources one needs when one first starts out as a trader what this would one, you... For example, nicely written by my Zeynep, quick notes on my notebook as well. Nobody else would be able to touch the notebook, but, uh, but she can. So you got to have a notebook. Okay. Uh, my first legendary trader, one, a lady who ran, ran the JP Morgan prop book at the, same, at the time, uh, mid-90s, legendary book, legendary lady, kept a, had kept a book like that way back at the time, you know, Italian, here I am. That every single one she would she would write down where the where the treasury is closed and for a long time i did the same thing yeah you can pick whoever, whatever you want to pick you know uh, it was first lira then it became try oil gold whatever your specialty is specialty is brazil 40s etc but it almost gave me a um a framework i mean sometimes those those uh, those pages speak to you as well then inside that notebook, don't just write down Italian lira and where the US 10 year closed, <laughs> but uh, take notes um, from the morning call to the you know interesting uh, meeting you have, um, your FX strategies, um, one of his key tools for the day. Uh, jot them down, jot them down, jot them down. And then I, I do have uh, many notebooks. Again, everybody who knows me very closely. Uh, would know that my my desk at the work workplace at the moment is full of those notebooks as well, same and same at home. So that hasn't changed. 
throughout uh, throughout my career and then talk to people what we're doing now not just the uh, Okay, Bloomberg chat in this day and age is also fine. WhatsApp, you know, I, I cannot fight against the time either, but good old talking to people. Yeah. And um, one sentence uh, will stick with you. Again, let's make it more concrete. Uh, two, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, um, uh, with one of the more famous client friends, we were discussing the market. Uh, we we're talking about uh, WAM, this weight, weighted average maturity. Now it's becoming very famous because of what Fed didn't do, Fed didn't eat enough, etc. Most people very right, they didn't even know what WAM stood for. Anyway, I go through my analogy, you know, if Powell doesn't increase QE or WAM, um, yeah, this market may not be ready for it. Then back to your uh, positioning point, huh? he goes, no, 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 you know, nobody expects it. To, uh, you know, 29 out of, uh, 26 out of 29 economists that I talk to, blah, blah, nobody expects this. I'm like, no, 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 you know, again, that's back to art and science things. People, especially at least the race market, expect that expects that ramp thing. Anyway, then he goes, "What happens to the dollar then?" That that question I remember, uh, even though that wasn't the first thing that popped out to me at uh, at that time. I was more uh, obsessed with what the curve can do on the rates, or our big friends, FANG, six, seven stocks, what what it may mean for them, etc. But when uh, the investor asked about the dollar, I'm like, hmm. Because in my mind, that would be a risk off. Already, uh, I was sensing that uh, the long euro conviction was uh, was shaking. We talked about this. So if my scenario played out, my immediate answer was that that would be dollar bid. Then I started writing and talking about dollar more. A very, very concrete example to you. Um, and for those, who, for, for, for those who, for those who's on, that, that, uh, sorry, that was up. Sorry, told you, that was up at uh, yeah. one seventeen, uh, almost one eighteen. Yeah. It, now we're back down to one fifteen, one sixteen again. Yeah. You know, I I cannot necessarily saying say we're going we go straight back down to one twelve, one ten. Now it becomes a different ball game. Now I need to sense positioning again. Now I need to have more of those uh, phone calls. I need to call people I trust on the FX side and see. What they're hearing, what they're hearing, what they're thinking. So every day, I, um, I, uh, I F9 my thinking more and more like that. I, I hear you, Ozan. That makes complete sense again. And, you know, you're, of course, fortunate to have, you know, access to, you know, strategies, research, et cetera, et cetera. But let's say somebody, uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of somebody, uh, you know, uh, who has got, his, got access to, you know, Bloomberg, CNBC, Market Watch, uh, interviews of uh, nowadays all these uh, a lot of major strategists from banks, hedge funds. They kind of appear on TV. They give the insights. So it's almost as if you have to create your own virtual team in your mind of a, a couple of FX strategists in them, couple of um, uh, coal people, couple of uh, you know equity people. Have your time during the day dedicate to what this person's saying. This person's saying, and then get a sense of. Get a sense of whether you, that person is, you know, how, uh, what a, what the track record of that person is, and uh, b, tie that in a little bit with with the uh, other indicators of market sentiment. If everyone's saying the same thing, then sometimes it can be a reverse indicator as well. So I, I think it you even if you're sitting, if you're someone sitting alone, in a room, without a large kind of you know. 25, 30, 40 people it, as part of an organization supporting you, you have to then in your, it, you create, almost create a little bit of a virtual team in a way, right? Perfectly Try and- you perfectly understood me. And I really believe uh, one can do this. Obviously, it's easier for me to speak after uh, uh, two decades of uh, almost almost gray hair. But uh, even if I was lucky enough, you know, I wish uh, to just start at uh, age 22, 25, I think this can be done. You put it perfectly. Either on the, and we'll come to this, by the way, this is one of the things that I really want to emphasize with you, the importance of the floor, the importance for the uh, young guys, junior guys to almost be like in a position, a sponge, sit and observe uh, what the key ladies and guys are doing, thinking, how are they taking their risk? Why is he uh, increases hedge? Why why did he decrease his hedge there? Uh, How does he make his decisions, etc.? It's it's vital if you're a junior on on the floor. Or 
If you tell me Ozan, not everybody is a junior on the floor. What if this person, back to Robin Hood, is sitting like me now? I'm on on the living room. You understood me. I think this can really be done as long as you have that uh, phone, streaming, whatever you're uh, you're using. Uh, I'm sure many people either read and or watch the book Big Short. Form it. Some of those people, uh, legend, they caught the all seven, all eight, all nine cell of. They were sitting on some boxes, one TV up, uh, but obsessed. Try not to be that obsessed. Try to have a family as well. Twenty-four <laughs> seven. Yeah. And uh, relying on two, three people they talk on the phone with, being strong against a big uh, negative carry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, this can be done. This can be done from a nice uh, beach in, uh, in, in Turkey or Greece. This can be done from uh, a mountain in Vancouver. Okay. Uh, Ozan, uh, what would you say is the very first step as a beginner trader to go from zero to he- hero? And if you had to break down trading philosophy for someone starting out into three steps, what would those three steps be? Just short if you can, bullet points. Uh, we already talked, you know, touch, touch the basics actually. First of all, have a view, form a view. Uh, wait for that view to come to you. Just because I said that, uh, you know, the, the first day, don't uh, think of yourself, so, as yourself as the next Warren Buffett or, or, <laughs> or Soros. But um, whatever you're assigned, if it's uh, uh, front end uh, US rates, you know, try to have an idea about uh, what Fed will do in the next meeting. If it's uh, if it's an FX desk, uh, try to call the next next move after the Lagarde meeting. But form a view. Then through our charts, uh, sentiment indices, either relying on your back end, forehand. I don't know. I don't know what you're gonna rely on, but uh, get your levels in your mind. Where, where, you know, what do you target going into this, and what is your stop loss, and then be disciplined about it. Mm-hmm. Much easier said than done, as you know, because you can get really carried away if you reach the target and want to double up, triple up, or again uh, at the very beginning we all believe even more so that we write eleven out of ten, uh, even at the stop loss level. Uh, one more day and you want, you, you, you may want to go against your target and get burned and lose your seat. So that's why it's very easy, very key to, to stick to those uh, levels. And then uh, another thing that I mentioned, especially in this day and age, uh, headline effects. People used to say when I first began, uh, you know, oh, you know, uh, that, that's priced in, that's known, vaccine, okay? We talk about it. Whatever your asset classes, whether you were equity trader, a rate trader, or FX trader, uh, you have your levels, you have your view. Uh, you heard me. If the if the vaccine comes, this is gonna happen. Man. Whether you agree with me or disagree with me, and headline did come. What are you going to do uh, if the rates move uh, sell off even more than you thought? Uh, um, are you going to chase? Are you going to fade? Um, have, a, have a game plan and try not to just say this was already in the price I'm going to fade it I'm a, I'm a big believer in uh, uh, especially in this day and age when robots and algos chase headlines uh, some of the headlines may be game changers so that's also something that uh, I would react differently on than I would necessarily 10 years ago Oh, fair enough. Those are the first three things that I would be careful of. Fair enough. Makes complete sense. Thank you, Ozan. That's a really an excellent answer and for everyone who's starting out in their career. Just extremely useful. He said to have a view, firstly. Secondly, wait for that view to come to you. And then other points that you mentioned. So now, Ozan, I want to talk about the S word, skills. Okay. Uh, sorry, not what you thought, just skills. Uh, now, not everyone has an economic degree from Harvard like you. Not everyone who goes to Harvard and becomes a trader and not everyone who goes to Harvard 
and actually does become a trader is necessarily a great trader. We now have this thing called the internet. So what are the key or crucial skills? And this is different from steps, methods. It's more like fundamental skills that you think one needs as a trader who's starting out someone at the very beginning of their trading journey. And how can that person start developing those skills now? Again, look, uh, an Ivy League uh, diploma is not necessary at all in my mind. Uh, first of all, uh, the important thing is try to bring the passion in the game. You need to you need to uh, live it. Uh, whether you're going to rely uh, at the beginning on your math and physics skills, or whether you're going to first rely on your uh, feel of the politics and economics, uh, you know you need to. Uh, I think it always helps uh, if you have a passion for the markets instead of you're in it just for the sake of uh, making money. Then, uh, obviously, again, I don't want to be misunderstood. All the Robin traders need out there need to be very careful. Margin call is something very real. We are hearing all the um, yeah. truly bad, bad stories, uh, yeah. uh, tragic uh, events as well for those who don't understand what type of trades they're getting into. But, after all that but, um, I welcome it. I welcome this uh, development of things becoming this much transparent. Uh, sometimes a group of um, uh, young 25, 27-year-olds being able to move a market as much as a you know, more elderly CIO gentleman or, or lady. Uh, and I think we should have uh, more and more of it when people... Uh, uh, almost look to down upon them, saying, you know, those type of that type of market shouldn't be touched because it's only dominated by those uh, ladies and guys who have a lot of time in their hands and can bet on sports, and they are moving the market. And talking about a pain trader, I think those guys are frustrated because the the world is not their world anymore. Um, I, I I I welcome in a way market becoming more. Uh, more of a democracy and, uh, and as long as they're careful and as long as they're not, they know what they're in, get, getting involved in, uh, I welcome more and more uh, guys and ladies to, to play the market that way. So, Zan, what I'm hearing is point number one, skill number one, passion. Skill number two, awareness, as you also mentioned earlier. Skill number three, focus, as you said earlier, sticking to the weeds. Would you summarize it as those three skills, or knowing am I your strengths, knowing your strengths? Like if you early earlier on in the game, uh, you know some some people are all rounders. They can bring both math, physics, and uh, understanding politics into game because it's becoming more and more important, especially in this in this day and age. Um, some are very good at only one or two of those three, four different areas then make sure that you try to complement yourself by others who can complement your skills. Again, as a, a 22, 23-year-old, you may not have the luxury for that, but all of us have friends and books and television. So, you know, it, it does, it, it, a team of five people with different skills don't need to sit next to you. You True. can bring it together. Again, back to what we just discussed 10 minutes ago. But make sure that you do know where your skills need to be complemented, where your weaknesses are, and try to bring the right people in to give you that edge. Okay, perfect. Uh, in the last 5 to 10 years, have you seen a significant increase in the presence of women in the market? I, I read a recent study uh, or something which came out, a survey which indicated that amongst portfolio managers, the women portfolio managers had actually performed better than men. Uh, and I was just curious as to whether there are now many more women in the market versus the past. How do you see that uh, that that shift? I know some concrete, again, not not not, not to be named. They're all uh, my clients and friends, Sophie's children. But very concrete examples of uh, those ladies who really uh, outmaneuvered everyone else. Um, so I do have some shining examples. 
uh, more in- increasingly so in the five ten years. But again, I have to give a but. Nowhere enough. Nowhere enough. I think I uh, I'm a pretty well known uh, veteran guy of the market. Uh, I'm privileged, lucky enough to uh, to do these map runs roundtables in every single uh, continent. Uh, even if I try to sometimes, uh, those tables are way too, and I'm talking about CIO dinners, way too uh, male-dominated for my taste. So I think there is still so much more to be done is the honest answer. So in my usual way, both both answers I gave are pretty honest. So when you, you know, when you hear on these uh, televisions, headlines, stats, yes, some some, uh, some ladies have outmaneuvered the market, outperformed the market, correct. I do have um, some uh, great examples like that. One of them, uh, I was discussing three, four factors why uh, equity sold off even more than expected yesterday, for example. Yes, there are examples like that. But the other side of the coin is also true. Uh, I cannot tell you uh, when I first began the roundtables or when I first became uh, head of macro sales, um, I used to have only one or two ladies on 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 the on the round tables. Now, even without me trying much, it's forty percent, fifty percent. No, the situation still needs a lot more improvement. Okay, that's uh, thank you, Ozan. That's uh, that's a very frank, honest answer, and clearly, there's a long way for us to go. Ozan, shifting for to sure. you, shifting to you as a person, and again, uh, this is very useful for our listeners, our learners. Uh, watching and learning from uh, from you today. Uh, what are your personal routines and rituals, if I may use that word, that have helped you over the years to get where you are now? Personal routines. How have these you know, routines, uh, practices, personal practices changed or evolved when you first started out to now? What has remained the same and what has changed and why, if you could share a couple of examples. First of all, uh, whether I'm in research, uh, trading, or sales, trying to bring everything together, I always wrote. I always wrote uh, my views. I always uh, put out what I'm thinking. Um, at the very beginning, it was just about a uh, bond in the seas because that's what I was uh, forming as my as my first job. Then. It became the different countries I covered under under research. But uh, uh, besides the mo- monthly reports, my official uh, job, I always put out what I thought. Then in trading and, and sales role, um, that became even more of a necessity to put my views out, uh, to even, either get recognition, push back, uh, learn from those, reach out to clients, etc., etc. And then talking about the evolution, I don't exactly remember when after the global financial crisis uh, maybe uh, you know 12 13 years ago uh, one of the closer friend clients say said uh, you know ozanski you're sending uh, you know maybe 20 25 uh, messages a day mine at 25 these days by the way uh, but i really at least at the beginning of the day when i start get, when i get going i need to know what you're thinking okay he he touched the nerve there. Next morning, I sat down and what did I write? What do I think here? And I don't remember <laughs> when, but I do know that became uh, the brand today. That that's that's uh, it evolved in different ways. When at first it was one Bloomberg paragraph, then two paragraphs. And now it's even more bringing my research, bringing my uh, trading all together, almost being a face of my. Bank not only my view, my view is always there, especially at the beginning and at the end. But in the uh, middle of the piece, uh, you know, as an everyday reader, you know, you, I bring out my own research, I bring out my head traders. Um, I I don't always agree with them, but I I make sure that uh, the the brand is there, so that the clients always don't have to do my way. They can agree with different uh, researchers. They may disagree with all of us and do their way, but. I represent my firm, so that's that's how it evolved. Um, I told you about the notebook. The notebook was there from first day, my friend. From first day on, there were all. That's a clear routine and ritual. I like that. I like. I love the notebook. Notes. Uh, I don't remember when I stopped, but yes, I don't write anymore. 
uh, you know, euro, euro dollar this, uh, US 10 year that. I always have it in my in my head, but uh, that's always a, a, another thing. At the end of my uh, day, I do write. Uh, usually, it's called uh, WDITH. What do I think is shortened version? Uh, the key events of that day. So, okay. so that I first of all form my opening spiel, opening piece for the next day, but also it's almost like a uh, like a diary. Uh, like today, I would write what I told you 10, 15 day, minutes ago. Three bearish forces, one bullish force, how they would react, what I think about the stimulus. Um, Turkey today, right? Uh, uh, we were very right. We were the only bank who called for a hike, first hike since in two years. How the currency reacted, what it may mean, the retail doesn't seem to be convinced. Uh, what will what will convince the retail? There you go. I mean, in 30 seconds, I gave you the preview for tomorrow's views. For tomorrow, what I'm going to try to market tomorrow as my views. Okay. Another thing I want to add, like these uh, yeah. these days, I need to wait for these Zoom calls and stuff. But uh, again, I, it's a good sign when you don't remember when you started something. Uh, I don't I don't even remember, remember when I started my global roundtables. Um, but after again, I don't have to tell you. I don't have to tell many of the viewers probably. But after every single roundtable, right after, you know, maybe sadly for my wife and family, that midnight, that one a.m., uh, those impatience go out. Very very key because in this day and age, uh, if you're shy, if you're, uh, you know. Lazy is not the word with me, but if you don't have the energy, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, the next morning maybe uh, maybe too late. One concrete example for you: in a Singapore dinner, okay, um, my it's, it's perfect alignment. Uh, my traders and research agreed that Crodo could go for QE3 on the, on the big Japan trade, the good old Nikkei higher dollar dollar yen higher trade. Uh, we had our first two injections. People weren't really sure about the third one. Uh, in a in a Singapore launch, I did find the energy to not wait for you know the plane and then to you know maybe ride on the plane again. I sent it out. The next morning, uh, you know we we have a lunch in Hong Kong. To this day, I remember Rohit when the Blackberries came out. You know, <laughs> as if like, as if a bomb uh, <laughs> fell in that place because you know noon at Hong Kong time. Crota did do the, did do the QE3. Of course, those dinner notes were even more valuable. I remember whatever, probably six, seven years down the line, I still remember it. Um, talking about a lesson, huh? You know, don't wherever you came in your career, don't be don't be too lazy not to write that. Put it down so that you can feel good about what you did about your call, and you can talk about it seven years down the road. So as long as you can remember, you always. Uh Try to put down your thoughts at the beginning of the day, speak to a few people, bounce things off. That's your kind of morning ritual. And then at the end of the day, what's happened during that day and kind of, you know, assimilate your thoughts for what's happened the day, which then informs where you are probably going the next day. That's, it sounds like your routine has remained pretty constant over, over the last two decades. It's, it's evolved. Your, your canvas has become broader, but. You're asking a good question to my heart again. Even though, again, back to tennis. Even though I, you know, I'm, I'm a Federer man. I see myself as Federer. There's a lot of Nadal in me. These routines are very, very important. Where you put those balls every single time. What you say. I'm a bit like that in my uh, in my own way. I, how I start my morning. Who I listen to in the morning. Uh, what time I write. What do I think here. Who I call when. Um, who I call for different asset classes. Uh, trust me, those macro dinner nights, days can be very, very long. You know, you go, engage people, have that three-hour dinner. And at the end of it, thanks to some of the people, some of my uh, juniors, analysts who back me up as well, put out those notes together and send it before you go to bed. It's, it takes a lot of time, but I think that's the perfect way of doing it. Ozan, I'm going to ask you a question from a perspective of a, quote-unquote, Robin Hood investor or trader. Uh, how important is it to have a stop loss? When would you stick to it? Are there certain cases where you wouldn't stick to it? So let's say I buy uh, I buy Amazon at uh, 3,500. Uh, and yeah, I know it's a good stock. Stocks over the last 100 years have gone 
broadly gone up, I think, mostly uh, uh, as an index as a whole. And, and many and many you know individual stocks as well have moved higher and higher over time, like you know Microsoft or Apple, all the great companies. But of course, there've been lots of periods of volatility, drawdown, and yes, there has been the uh, a couple of one lost decade at least. I remember perhaps even one lost five to eight year period sometime in the sixties or seventies. So if I have uh, if I as an individual has bought Amazon at I know whatever the high is like thirty five hundred let's say, and today it's at uh, three thousand one hundred. I I don't want you to comment on Amazon particularly. I'm using this just as an example to be clear, more in terms of mental thinking framework from a stop loss perspective. Would you have a would you set a stop loss for it? So you know. Uh, Everyone gets carried away in a bull market, right? You buy, you sell, you make money, and then you buy something, and then you're a bit caught. What do you do? Yeah, from from my uh, perspective, personal experience, best traders I I observed, uh, cushion and not putting everything to the same basket is very important. Hmm. If uh, if you're just starting out, my Robinhood friend, and Amazon is the only thing you have at uh, thirty five hundred. I feel, I, I feel for you, <laughs> and then, then I feel that you 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 get knocked out on the first punch. But if you if you if you have when you're starting, if you have you know three or four different stocks or three or four different assets, you can rely to. Uh, you know, in, in my game, like uh, okay, let's say uh, in August, if you got carried away with uh, what was happening in the market, this uh, option call buyer, blah blah blah. And you really miss called the fangs, but at the same time you had a good feel about uh, about the dollar. And if you sold the uh, dollar at the right, uh, right, if you bought the dollar at the right that was going against the hurt, that's your cushion. Whatever you lost in the Amazon and Apple side of uh, side of things, maybe you made from your uh, FX trade. So you can mm. uh, you can you can have some uh, teeth in the game, grind in the game. You can stay in the game. If you only rely on one horse and bet everything on that one horse, you know, then whatever mind balance I can give you is not enough. So don't put everything in the same basket. Try to diversify. Easier said done than done. Another thing, uh, try to uh, uh, start in the first uh, few months, first few weeks on the up, up front so that you have some cushion. Otherwise, you will continue to dig yourself out of the hole. Um, so have a stop loss. Uh, should you should one have a stop loss as an equity uh, invest as an equity? I think in my mind, yes. In my mind, yes is the answer because uh, otherwise I would contradict myself. Uh, yeah. What I told you, I think like a half an hour ago. It's, uh, have a view, then have your targets, have your stop loss, have your uh, have your target level. I would be lying if I said I or you or anybody always stuck to their uh, stop loss or always stuck to their targets. Sure. But if you always um, abolish your stop loss, then you cannot stay in the game. You know what I'm saying? Unless, as, uh, as, uh, as, as someone famous once said, uh, let your profits run and uh, always have a stop loss. <laughs> and otherwise, somebody will, loss. sooner or later, somebody will tap you on that shoulder. Correct. Fair enough, it, and it could be your it could be your spouse as well in many cases. I was going to say it could be your wife. I swear to God, I was going to say it could be your wife. <laughs> okay, uh, Ozan, uh, it's almost October twenty twenty. As we have this conversation, COVID has changed the world. Some say temporarily, some others say permanently. Some say a bit of both. What do you feel is the medium and longer term impact on the market? Uh, there's, of course, markets directly in terms of what the Federal Reserve may do, blah, blah, blah. We can talk about that a bit. And then, of course, second order in terms of what's happening in the real economy to the extent it does affect the market, right? Empty airports, you know, as, as you also mentioned, uh, you know, empty empty streets, City of London empty, Wall Street looking, you know, a lot of, lot, lot of these little ghost towns all over all over the world, right? Whether you to move from London to New York to Singapore to Hong Kong to... Uh, and so on, right? Things are, aren't what they were. Uh, maybe a vaccine comes out, could still take a couple of years to come back. Some things may change permanently. What are those? What do you think is going to change? And uh, how do you, how does one adapt, survive, and thrive? Markets one, and then I want to dig into our industry as well, because that's, that's dear to my heart as well. Markets-wise, uh, look, I think, uh, sadly, 
Main Street versus Wall Street, uh, another uh, analogy that I'm really very into, the gap will get uh, wider and wider. Uh, before we fought the vaccine, um, I think central banks uh, have our back, but which back it, is, is it? You know, it's more, uh, you know, uh, not even that just the Wall Street. Poor banks are not doing that great because of the way uh, all the world is in zero rates, whether it's steeper curves or not, everything is zero. So again, we're becoming more and more Japan-like. But uh, you know what I'm saying, we'll call it 1%, calling the six, seven stock. Um, winners will continue to go um, towards that. Uh, March 23, April 7, central bank interventions were huge. Um, they protected the downside, uh, you know, buying credits, uh, by buying fallen angels, but the fact of buying high yields, even though they're now saying they're out of ammunition, you know, I think to me, oh, they, no, they're not out of they, anything. Yeah, exactly. Buying, buying even equity, equity, if necessary, YC, whatever it is, this game will continue on and on and on. And on the, on the other hand, the moment we do uh, 3,300, 3,600, whatever in stocks, you see what's going on in, uh, in DC on the, on the uh, stimulus part of the equation. So in all countries around the world, in US, we are obsessed with the main street wall versus Wall Street. Uh, will get worse if uh, fangs were uh, either split, uh, uh, tax a bit more fairly, that game could change. In the Trump versus Biden dynamic, no matter how the cards are dealt, blue wave, red wave, split, I don't see a major change. If uh, somebody like Bernie Sanders or Warren was on the other side of the ticket, then rightly or wrongly, whatever you think about MMT, we could fear that, or, you know, market, I wouldn't fear it, but some in the market could fear that MMT could be tried. MMT being um, modern monetary theory. Monetary theory, exactly. Just to be clear, yeah. Uh, then uh, some people say, oh, but uh, it's unrealistic to say that then the concrete would increase uh, taxes because they would never do that. Okay, maybe they would never do that. Maybe then God would come. Maybe people would believe more in, would see more inflation. More importantly, Markets, because market is not exactly in love with modern monetary theory, majority of the market, inflation expectations would rise. Maybe, indeed, our curves would normalize more. And that's what we want, right? We would have steeper curves. We would play a different game. But all of that will not necessarily uh, happen under Trump versus Biden. So, unfortunately, uh, my prediction is uh, uh, one month, one year, you and if, if you and I have this discussion again, We'll be talking more deflation than inflation. Uh, more people not going back to the uh, job market. Yeah. Um, you know, Darwinism. So these kind of trends, I think, unfortunately, won't go away. Suppressed volatility. So, um, so the trend towards a gig economy, for example, is not just reinforced, but probably accelerates over time. Exactly. And uh, no matter what your back to your uh, for and back and no matter what the valuation charts show, uh, you know, these test doesn't zoom. There's a reason why they're up 300 percent and 500 percent, because in this day and age, when we are more and more um, uh, pushed into our households, um, some of these stay home trades will continue to win more and more. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, we could try something different um, under MMT, under a more distributional approach. Probably market wouldn't allow it, like Mitterrand's in the uh, in 1980s, but at least I would be discussing something new. Now, between Trump deregulation and Obama continuation, Biden, for markets itself, for the fate of my TY, US 10 year, and for NASDAQ. Is there really something that different? I doubt it. So, Ozan, perfect. All makes sense again. If are there, do you have, say, a couple of tips or tactics or a new framework or adapting of earlier strategies that you think now may be a game changer in trading post COVID? Uh, this could be thematic. This could be style wise. Uh, thematic, for example, a sector. I think you've already kind of answered it a little bit in terms of you know maybe the the whole you know. Uh, COVID stocks thing may stay for a while, go up, go down, but or could be a long-term trend. 
uh, FANG top five, you know, the mega growth cap stocks, long term could be a long term trend. Uh, but so do you see these do you see these long term trends just continuing, even being more reinforced? Everything has risks, you know, breakups, et cetera, you mentioned. But just I, I want to get a sense of what specific is there any change in a tip or tactic or any kind of new strategy framework post COVID versus pre that leaps to your mind? And there needn't be. It could just be more of the, the same. One, the big one is, look, the big one is uh, is inflation. All this average inflation. Fed, right? Two months. Uh, yeah, Jackson, one month ago. Wow, what's supposed to be grand new thing. Average inflation targeting. Uh, we'll let it run hot, overshoot. Then even yesterday, Evans sort of said, uh, almost almost made a gap, right? We can hike before 2%. Then he declared they had to intervene. Now the guy says 2.5. I'm a big skeptic. Just because, you know, I said the bubble outside in our houses, asset price inflation, etc. The main street inflation, I think is still waiting for Godot. If you really disagree with me, if you believe that these guys can create this, this inflation, if we can overshoot, there is so much to be done here because then they will have to change tact on their, uh, we will not even think about thinking about hiking rates either, right? They're going to, they're going to talk very different. Um, Go for it. But if you side with me also, if you believe in more deflation, suppress volatility, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, then uh, sky, is the, sky may be the limit, limit in certain uh, Nasdaq stocks and uh, S&P despite valuations. So make your, make your bet now, make your choice now, and go for it. It's very clear from the way I'm talking that I'm not siding with the inflation cap. But that's the big one to... That's the big one to uh, to decide. Uh, so you could have inflation. So we could have inflation in stocks and Wall Street, but not but not inflation in wages. Essentially, is what you're saying. That's my belief, big time. Again, if we went a different way, if we strengthened the unions, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it could have been different. If the so market fears all this. So stock inflation, maybe dollar inflation, maybe. And no wage inflation is Ozanski's call, effectively. No, on, the do- on the dollar as well. Look, on the dollar, uh, if you believe uh, Biden, not necessarily even a blue suit, but if you, if you, if you believe in uh, Biden plus uh, a vaccine coming, the way markets are priced in now, you almost have a 70% chance that come, uh, okay, another thing is when this election will be decided. Come next January, come je- next February, things will look better again for the short dollar trade, higher equities trade, and even maybe for uh, break evens, uh, rate steeper excitement. If you have a gut feel that for the second time in a row, 538, for the Nate Silver's old world, he's now saying like 74%, 76% Biden chances. If you'll be wrong again, if Trump will win, on top of it, if vaccine through distribution, this, that, if the whole thing gets laid into uh, into next year, things are looking, continuing to look good for the King Kong US dollar who has just woken up. Make your pick. Yeah, yeah, makes makes complete uh, makes complete sense, Ozan. Ozan, uh, again, following on the same point, post COVID world, October twenty twenty. Looking forward to thinking ahead, 2023, not so far away, two, two and a half years. Knowing the future, as we discussed in this prior point, what actions, if any, are you taking to prepare for the future professionally or personally? And what actions should people who wish to trade successfully, you know, take to adapt to this changing future? Example, if you're calling for more AI and robots, uh, that could be a you know it is it, it it could be a concrete action step for me as a retail trader to be aware of that trend and uh, and if so, what one can do to prepare for the scenario? We'd just love to hear AI, about this. AI, AI robots are reality. You know you can't shy away from it. Embrace it. Don't forget that a robot is coding that uh, a human is coding that robot as well. So try to uh, understand what uh, makes those robots tick. What makes those algos tick? Uh, read more about them, learn more about them. Um, you cannot shy from it. Um, at the same time, I think uh, we talked about this wherever you are, as long as uh, you stick to some of the skills that we mentioned, uh, 
you don't have to be on the trading floor now to, to call these markets better. My proof, my point was, I think, proven more and more. As long as you rely on your, uh, you pick your army rightly, either from your living room, from your trading floor, from your beach, from your mountain, uh, you can ace the markets that you're specializing on. And uh, through the sad uh, phase of COVID, I think at least uh, that's a chance given to our uh, market-loving people, t- uh, traders. And uh, I want to use this opportunity to mention something that I already mentioned, something dear to my heart. What's really important for our industry, investing, banking, markets, juniors, what really cannot uh, be duplicated is the care you give to a junior when she or he is next to you on your team on the floor versus this whole world of Zooms and Skypes. By all means, reach out, talk to them. That's, you know, Skype is also important, but it cannot, it cannot replicate. Yeah. Uh, how he or she learns on the floor, on the job, uh, listening to the head trader, what makes she, what makes her tick, um, what makes her increase the hedges, decrease the hedges, uh, hedge in the first place or not, um, how she talks to her juniors, how uh, she, she directs a team uh, around the trade differently. These things cannot, you know. Uh, we grew up observing these things, yeah. and that's how, especially the better one, ones of us, got better and better through picking our mentors, men, uh, mentors, and learning from them. Uh, hopefully, this will go away soon for all humanity's sake, for all of our uh, uh, mind wellness sake. But that's the key thing that I'm uh, uh, missing, and that's why I think uh, even if it's only rotation. Uh, in this new f- f- found uh, work uh, home balance as well, even rotations are are important to make sure that uh, you spend some some time with your uh, juniors, with your rotators, with your analysts. Uh, you uh, warm them to the game a bit more by spending more real uh, real time with them. I think this is very very important. And probably the last question. Uh, Post COVID, as more uh, you know, given and just generally also noting the trend of towards you know artificial intelligence, uh, algorithmic based trading, uh, would it mean that given this trend, would it mean that technical analysis based trading by individuals could be more successful than momentum based trading, or the vice versa, or no change? I think, as we said at the, be- at the beginning, um, best. Is a is to have a, a combination. You, your background may be more AI or quant. Your background may be more momentum. But I think you should make sure that you give your ear to the other side of the net as well. First mm-hmm. of all, um, I think it's uh, uh, it will be a fool's game to deny the importance of AIs and robots in this day and age. Um, but how you use them. Uh, is up to you. And as I already hinted at the very beginning of our conversation, uh, I use it more and more to try to quantify what I mean by the pain state, by the frustration state, by where the herd mentality is. Um, you know, AI charts, uh, robots, different analysis of the algos help me do that. And then my art is to choose when to go with the algos and when to go against them. So define your science, define your science and define your art and then try and find a good pattern to work with both. Exactly. Balance. I really, again. It's all about balance. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it if I don't believe it. I, I, I do believe in balance. Look, not everybody is the same. Maybe some people are really successful in life because of leaning completely this way, completely that way. I do believe in balance. So mindful trading. Ma- ma- it hasn't. It hasn't. It hasn't hurt me the past twenty-five years. So mindful trading. Trade from your spirit. Trade from your head. Combine both. Hi, thank you for watching this conversation with a financial markets expert, a guru who understands the DNA of trading, a global head in investment banking, and our friend Ozan Tarman. Trading can be a winner-takes-all, hard and ruthless business. 
and we're all looking for that competitive edge. That edge will often be found in unconventional places. Just like Ozan implements an unorthodox forehand and backhand strategy to succeed, so do we. Here at MindWelt, we believe that success is a holistic game. We unite three areas of mastery, discovery and acquisition of career purpose, growing and protecting your financial wealth, and evolving your spiritual health. I'll go on a limb here and say that you've got the first two parts covered. But what about the last one, spiritual health? Did you know that the major aspect of spiritual health is getting in touch with your deeper or your higher self? The deeper self that some would call intuition, gut feeling or instinct. Regardless of where you are at the moment and how many millions you make per year, the endless cycle of making more and more money is a bottomless pit that can never be filled. While you're seemingly on a roll, a little voice will inevitably creep in and say, is this it? Isn't there anything more to life, something more meaningful, more fulfilling? I know because I've been there. I've felt the feeling that no matter how much I made, it was never enough. Let me tell you, once you hear that voice, it's only going to get louder and louder. Spiritual health is a crucial, often missing and neglected aspect of success. This is exactly why we offer you tools to access your spirituality, which will not only give you peace of mind, but also help make you a better trader. Imagine having a sixth sense and always being one step ahead of the competition, especially if they are completely oblivious to the power of the spiritual self, or even if they are fully aware of this spiritual power, they haven't figured out the way to tap it. Imagine living a well-balanced life while making more money than ever before. If that sounds appealing to you, MindWealth proudly presents America's greatest hidden treasure, Kevin Blackwell. We deliver you the first episode in the Evolve with Masters series. In this mind-blowing and spirit-moving episode, Kevin shares eternal wisdom and universal truth. We will dig deeper into the following topics and ideas. What is a question you should answer if you want to realize who you are and why you've been created? The essence of different ascended masters and the nature of their relationship with Source or God. Kevin's experience of the Buddha and the mysteries he contains within himself. The word of the day in these troubled times that we find ourselves in. Please click on the link in the description below and watch the premiere episode of Evolved Masters with Kevin Blackwell. We believe and hope you will enjoy it.